fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver. In the old Mexican district of Santa Fe, a large plump man in bare feet, dirty white cotton trousers and shirt, sat cross-legged against an adobe wall with a large but ragged straw sombrero pulled down over his eyes. Poncho stirred, then looked up as a boot touched his bare foot. Oh, why you kick at me, huh? Why you work me from the siesta, why? Ah, Max! So you come to see your good amigo Poncho, huh? Where's this, Poncho? I've come all the way from New Mexico to see my old amigo. Oh, poor Poncho does not do so well, Max. The dinero... He's hard to get. Even one peso. See, in my pocket, nothing but hole. Oh, 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 here. I give you ten pesos. Hey, Max, you are rich. That's yes. Uh, but where you get much of dinero like this, huh? I am one big outlaw now, Pancho. If you are not too fat, you could be one too. Oh, but the big outlaw. Is that good, Max? But of course, Pancho. It is just to be smarter than the law, that's all. Then you see someone with gold or five pesos? Bueno, you show the gun, you take it. No, it is not for me. Pancho will go on tending the sheep. The horse, she does not like to carry, Pancho. About to be the big outlaw, Max. How do you get to be like that? Easy. I have joined the gang of one smart fellow, one big outlaw leader named Blackie Norton. Blackie Norton? Oh, caramba. He's death itself. He's smart, Pancho. He knows I am smart. That is why I have come to you. Max, he says, Max, go to your friends. Find out who has much gold. It is time for us to lighten somebody's purse again. <laughs> So, Pancho, I have come to you. You are much in the marketplace. You see and hear of those who have gold, perhaps, eh? Oh, see, Max. 
Yesterday, two American traders left Santa Fe with loaded pack horses. They carried plain boxes and dirty sacks. But inside, amigo, there is gold. Gold and furs and silks. Oh, you know the names of these Americanos? For five more pesos. Where? Ah, oh, yeah, the names, Pancho. Uh, one is Senor DeWitt, the other Senor Arch. And where are they going? Perhaps if you drop five more... No, 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 I shall take back all the pesos if you do not tell me. And they are going to Bent's Fort. From there they go by boat to the east. I have heard them talk much of their journey. You are fine, amigo Pancho. Senor Blackie and Norton would be very much pleased to hear of the traders. They are the first who have lived with such a rich cargo, but there are others with him. Four hombres. Oh, that is good to know. Very good. Now, Pancho, not a word to anyone, Savvy. <laughs> <laughs> I do not talk to the sheep, amigo. <laughs> Pancho doesn't bother going about with the mouth hanging open. Good. Do not worry, amigo. But remember, Pancho, when you get the riches from the Americano traders, no? See, I remember you, Pancho. You will come to my farm when I buy it and tend my flocks. Adios, amigo. Adios. <laughs> Ford, Colorado Territory on the Arkansas River was a supply depot and meeting place for traders, trappers, and other pioneer travelers to the west on the Santa Fe Trail. The trail followed the river, and many preferred to use boats to transport goods for trading. At one of the docks, men were transferring loads from pack horses to a flat-bottomed single-cabin boat. Jack DeWitt and Bert Hodge Traders who were returning east from a profitable trip to Santa Fe stood watching as their crewmen worked. We're going back with a small fortune in gold, furs, and silks, Burgess. I told you to be worth our while to make the trip to Santa Fe. Yeah, if word got around what we have in those boxes and burlap bags, we might run into trouble. It's a good thing we have four good crewmen we can trust. Oh, all six of us are armed, Bert. Worst part of our trip is over. Frankly, I was worried on the journey from Santa Fe to here. How soon do you think we'll be showing off, Jake? Oh, I'd say in a few hours. Huh? Once the stuff is stowed away, we'll lay in supplies and leave for the east. We have enough fuel aboard to carry us to Fort Dodge. All right, hurry up, man. Get that stuff aboard. <laughs> cabin not far from the settlement, Blackie Norton, notorious outlaw leader, was playing cards with four of his followers. Uh, that ought to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here comes Max. He seems to be in a hurry. Senor, the traitors are about ready to leave, Senor Blackie. Good. Game's over, boys. It's time for us to be moving. Look, Blackie, you sure what's in the traitor's cargo? We don't want to go to all that trouble and risk just to get buffalo hides or something else we don't want. Max, Baldy doesn't seem to believe what I told him, so you tell him and the others just what you told me. Of course, Senor Blackie. You see, senores, when we passed through Santa Fe, I went to visit my friend Pancho. He told me two traders from the east had been in town. Well, sure, but lots of traders come there. But the two traders I have here about brought trinkets and fancy eastern clothing, Senor Baldy. Mm. They brought guns and knives. Many things the Mexicans in Santa Fe want so much. Go on. They exchanged them for much gold and valuable furs and silks. Then they started to Bent's Fort on the trip back east. They are the same traders who are leaving by boat in a short time. The rich cargo is there for the taking. She's a slow boat, that one. That means we'll be able to ride down the trail and get ahead of them. Then when they put in some place for the night, we'll move in and take over. How many men are aboard, Max? The two traders and the crew of four men. That's six of us against six of them. But we'll have the advantage of surprise, Baldy. 
We'll plug them all and throw them overboard. <laughs> now, let's get our supplies together and then hit leather. <laughs> A short time later, the six gunmen sat in their saddles and watched from a wooded hill overlooking the river as the trader's boat got underway. Look, boat's leaving now. The tub isn't very fast, but it's moving downstream. It will not be easy, Senor Blackie, to reach the boat if he does not dock. Uh, I got it figured out, so don't worry. They'll keep moving tonight. But by tomorrow night, the boat will reach a part of the river where there are rapids. Well, what about it? Baldy, the river men always moor their boats against the bank at that point for the night. It's too risky to go through the rapids while it's dark. So that is the place where we shall attack, no? Yeah. We'll be waiting and hiding near there. When the boat is moored against the river bank, we'll jump them, take them by surprise. Well, it looks like this is going to be easy after all. Let's go. Uh, yeah. Get up. Get up. Several hours after the boat had sailed and the crooks had left, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, stopped in a wooded grove just south of Bent's Fort. It was dusk, and they planned to pitch camp. Bent's Fort is only a mile from here, Toto. Ah. Maybe Blackie Norton gang stop here. We know they came this way. We'll... The rider heading up the trail seems to be in a hurry. Ah. Rider look like woman. Yes, I... Horse tumble, throw woman. She may be hurt. Come on. Uh-huh. A few moments later, the masked man and the Indian reached the figure lying on the trail. She stuck her head. She's unconscious. Uh-huh. A Mexican girl. We'll carry her to the camp, Toto. Then give her first aid. <laughs> Later in camp, the girl opened her eyes. She glanced around, gingerly felt the bandage on her head, then fastened her eyes on the masked man and Indian standing beside her. What What happened? You were thrown from your horse. You'll soon be all right. The mask. You must be one of them. Oh, I'm not an outlaw, if that's what you mean. You do not be afraid. We help you. We bandage head. But the mask. Why does that say We're your... friends and want only to help you. That's all that matters. I, I must go now. I... Oh. Easy, easy. Uh, your ankle is swollen. You have to rest for a day or two. But I must go. I must find my brother. Your brother? Si, yes, senor. I must go. No, it is no use. I cannot. Perhaps we can help you. You have been most kind. If I thought I could trust you... you... You can believe me. See, see, I think I can. My brother, he is called Mix. He is a bad one, an outlaw. Oh? I should not tell you this, senor, but I do not want him to be hunted for murder. For murder? See, si, senor. Mix has never killed anyone as bad as he is. For some time I did not see him. This morning he came to see me. I work on a rancho south of here. It was then he told me he was with the gang. Oh, what gang? He rides with an outlaw named Blackie Norton and his men. Oh. That gang we followed, Kimasabi. Why do you follow the gang? We help the law, senorita. Blackie and his men must be caught and punished. See, of course. And my brother must be punished with them. But I do not want him to be hanged. What if he hasn't killed anyone? Wait, I shall tell you. This morning, my brother came to see me. We talked behind the barn. It is good to see you again, Juanita. But, Max, you are still bad. Someday you will be caught. Oh, do not worry, little sister. Soon your big brother will be rich. Then no more shall I ride with the outlaws. We shall buy a little farm in Sonora, eh? Huh? Where will the riches come from, Max? You are my sister, so I trust you, Juanita. I am riding with one big outlaw, Blackie Norton, and his gang. Soon we shall do something to make us all rich. 
And what is that you are going to do? Two traders have left Santa Fe with much gold, furs, and silks. They plan to go down the river on a boat, but they shall never reach the east. Why not? Because, pretty little stupid one, we shall ride the trail along the river. Then one night they will disappear, and we shall ride the boat and have the rich cargo. I do not understand, Max. Why will they leave the boat and the cargo? Do not worry about it, little one. Go back to your kitchen before you are missed. In a week or so, I shall come for you with plenty of gold. And the traders, they will be at the bottom of the river. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue. A Mexican girl, Juanita, told the Lone Ranger and Tonto of a visit from her brother, Mex, and of the gang's plan to kill and rob the traitors. When she finished her story, the Lone Ranger spoke. You say your brother came to see you this morning, Juanita? Si, senor. I was very busy most of the day. Then when I begin to think, it came to me. My brother and the gang intend to murder the traitors and take the boat and the cargo. So it seems. Oh. I decided to find my brother, to beg him not to stay with the gang. There is no sheriff at Bentsport, otherwise I would have gone to him. The traitors must be warned. Toto will help the senorita to her horse. I'll ride to the edge of town with both of you. You take her to the trading post. The owner's wife will look after her. Ah. It will be dark by then. We'll ride to the docks and get word to those traders. Later, after taking Juanita to the trading post, Toto met the Lone Ranger among the trees just outside of the settlement. Oh, oh, oh. you found out about the traders, Toto? Ah. Man at trading post say two traders come from Santa Fe. Then leave boat this afternoon. The Santa Fe Trail parallels the river, Toto. It's up to us to ride eastward on the trail and stop that hole up in massacre. Here's the river. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode along the Santa Fe Trail all that night, stopping only for short periods to rest the horses. Early the following morning, they resumed the chase. Outlaws have many hours start, Kim Sally. That's true. But our horses are in fine condition and can make better time than most. Uh, Kim Sally, if boat out in the river, how crooks get to it? They can't. But the boat should reach the rapids by early evening. The traders are sure to moor it near the river bank and wait for daylight. We not think of that. It occurred to me that would be the logical place for the gang to attack. That's right. For the next few moments, the two men rode in silence. Then, as they rounded a bend in the trail... He must have you. Look! Indians! Yes, they'll see us in a moment. Turn toward the woods, son. Hurry! Come, 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 come. As the masked man and Indian headed into the woods, the hostile Indians, a hunting party of ten or twelve, caught sight of them. Use your guns, Tonto! Come, From the river, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode for some distance among the trees, with the Indians in hot pursuit. Master Big Fella, come on, Silver! The two men managed to ride a clear path through the wooded area, deftly avoiding branches and fallen logs. Finally, they rode into a clearing, which bordered on a ravine. Oh, 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 oh. Look! A ravine in Wake, Kimasabi? Yes, I see it. Glancing back, the masked man saw that the Indians had spread out. He realized that if he and Tonto were to turn and ride along the edge of the ravine, their pursuers would be able to cut them off and shoot them down. 
to gauge the distance across the deep ravine. It's about six feet across, Toto. We'll have to risk it. Uh-huh. Monsieur! Let him out count! The courageous horses race toward the wide, yawning ravine without lessening their speed. Finally, just as the rocky edge loomed before them... Up, big fellow! Up, scout! Both the gallant white stallion and the beautiful paint rose in a graceful curving leap, carrying their masters safely across the chasm. Good work, Silver. Plenty good. Come, Silver. After leaping the chasm, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode well out of gun range before bringing their horses to a stop among the trees. Hold it, hold it, big fella. Easy, Scott. That Indian. was touch and go for a moment, Toto. Uh, Indians not try to jump ravine. It was quite a jump, even for Silver and Scout. We're safe now from the Indians. Uh, we'll make our way back toward the river trail as soon as the horses are rested. Later, the masked man and Indian again rode along the riverbank on the Santa Fe Trail. Monsieur, what's count? Meanwhile, as the afternoon wore on, Jack DeWitt, one of the traders on the boat, spoke to his partner, Bert. Before long, Bert, we'll reach the rapids. Then we'll have to put in the shore for the night. Yeah. We ought to reach the rapids just about sundown, don't you think so? Yeah, that's right. We'll take turns standing guard tonight after we tie up along the riverbank. Ooh, why do we have to stand guard, Jack? Yeah? Yeah, just in case, Bert. For one thing, some hostile redskins might come prowling around. You never can tell. Is it so? Well, the other four can take their turns, too. That'll give us a chance to get some sleep. Now, I'll speak to them about it. It'd be a doggone shame after coming this far if we had anything happen now. Oh, well, I think we're safe enough. We'll leave the boat at Fort Dodge and join a wagon train for the trip to Kansas City. Trains of freight wagons make their trip every week. Yeah. And just think, Bert... When we reach Kansas City, we'll get enough cash for what we brought back to put us both on Easy Street. Later, in a cottonwood grove some distance down the river, others were talking of the rich cargo the traders were carrying. Good thing a cottonwood grove is up here on this bluff. We'll be able to see when that boat comes around the bend yonder without being noticed. See, now there, Senor Blackie. That is where the boats usually tie off. Yeah, that high bank with deep water below it forms a natural dock for the boats. Oh, <laughs> this is easy. Waiting here for those unsuspecting lunkheads to come right to us with their rich cargo. <laughs> yeah. Senor Blackie, that whistle. It must be the boat we are waiting for, no? I reckon it is, Max. Yeah, look, I see it coming around the bend now. See? Si. What are the plans, Blackie? We'll wait here and hide until just after sundown. Then we leave the horses up here, go down on foot. Now we'll split up into two groups of threes and board the boat from both ends with our guns ready. And from then on, make every shot count. The sun had gone down when the Lone Ranger and Tonto cautiously approached the place where the boat was moored. A short distance from the mooring place, they stopped. Oh, oh, easy, oh, easy, oh, easy, easy. We leave Silver and Scout here behind these big boulders, Toto. Uh, we not see sign of outlaw. We'll separate for a short time. I'll go down to the river and make certain the boat's there. You scout around in the woods and look for some sign of the gunman. We'll meet back here. Uh, A short time later, the Lone Ranger returned to the shadow of the large boulders. He found Tonto waiting. Tonto, the boat's there. Um, me find something. Me go through woods to top a bluff. Find six horses tied to trees. Not see men. The outlaws. That may mean they're closing on the boat right now, Tonto. They take the traders by surprise and I'll have a chance. We'll ride toward the boat. Easy, steady. Easy, scout. Easy, Tonto. Once in, we'll get them up, scout. We approach the mooring place. Fire into the air, Tonto. We'll put the traders and their crew on guard. Ah. At first, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode slowly down the trail. 
Then, swerving toward the boat on which two dimly lighted lanterns hung, they drew their guns. Now, Toto, into the air. <laughs> Look, Toto, I see men running along the bank. Out, out, out. The masked man and Indian rode in between the bluff and the boat where the outlaws had left their horses. Blackie Norton and his men had almost reached the boat, moving in two groups of threes toward each end, when the signal shots fired by the Lone Ranger and Tonto startled them. Then shots from aboard the boat took their attention. Head for the horses on the bluff. Men rode in from the trail. We'll be trapped. Senor Blackie, I see them. Two horsemen. They are between us and the horses. Twilight, the fight continued. The outlaws, caught out in the open between the guns of the masked man and Tonto and those of the traitors, were getting the worst of it. Most of them were wounded before Blackie finally called out. We give up! Hold oh, oh, easy, Senator. Oh. Drop your guns! The members of Blackie's gang, wounded and beaten, dropped their weapons and waited as the traitors and the crew came toward them from the boat. The Lone Ranger and Tonto dismounted and moved in from the opposite side. Hey, Jack, look! That one over there, he smashed. Must be another one. Yeah, and he still holds his gun, seeing that engine. Those are the men you want. They're the outlaws. Why? Now, wait a minute. You and that Indian must have been the ones who fired those warning shots as you rode in from the trail. That's right. We discovered the outlaws' horses on the bluff. I concluded they were moving toward the boat to take you by surprise. Hadn't it been for those two, we would have made it. I don't know what to make of this, mister. After all, I admit you and the engine did help us. Well, 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 now I say this. I am here of such a mask over who rides a big white horse. Blackie, I have warned you about him in the Indian, remember? By thunder, that's the one. But how do they know that... That they... doesn't matter. What about your men, DeWitt? Oh, uh, three are wounded, but I don't think anyone is badly injured. We'll help you take care of the wounded. Then I suggest you put these crooks aboard and take them down to Fort Dodge. The sheriff there will be glad to get his hands on Blackie Norton and his gang. Uh, you see, Blackie, he even knows you and us. He's one clever hombre. But you're not, Mex. You tipped off Blackie about the rich cargo the traders carry. Lucky for you, your bullets didn't kill anyone. Even at that, you'll be behind bars for a long, long time. All right, let's get them aboard, man. <laughs> Later, after the wounded had been taken care of and the outlaws securely bound, Jack spoke. I still don't know who you are or why you wear that mask, mister. But you sure did us a good turn. We're glad we could help, Jack. I hope you have no further trouble on your trip east. That mask over his work with the law. He and that Indian. Blackie did not take my warning to watch out for him. Oh, shut up. Not all we'll leave now. Adios, everyone. Goodbye, mister, and thanks. Bird, I'd sure like to know just who he is. Yes. Say, why not ask that Mexican outlaw? He seems to know about those two. Yeah. Hey, you. What do you know about that masked man and Indian? I have tried to tell, but you would not listen. Caramba, where would you find one so clever? Well, I shall tell you, there is only one. South of here, senores, everybody has heard of him. He is the Lone Ranger. I'll 